My name is Corinne Sutton. I am the owner of Body HD Fitness as well, nutritionist and online fitness coach, plus a vegan bodybuilder. Been vegan around 2011, 2012 till present time. And I went vegan mostly for the animals, also for health and wellness. It all started when I was in college. I was in a classroom learning about persuasive speaking in a public speaking course. And my professor brought in a special guest and that special guest was Gary Roski. He's like a huge vegan activist. And when he came into the classroom, he did his speech, which was, you could actually watch it on YouTube. It's called the best speech ever. And he did that, that exact speech. If you watch it on YouTube live, when he did it, I mean, he just checked all the boxes because for me, I never really looked at animals in that particular way and how he explained it when it comes around health, wellness, the pain, the suffering that animals went through. It just blew my mind because all the things that I thought when it came down to animal farming, I made up some type of story in my head that animals lived a very long life and when they got old or sick or whatever, they, they slaughtered them and they lived a healthy, you know, fearful life. Uh, but when I saw the light from Gary, I was just like, there's no way I can contribute myself when it comes down to that type of pain and suffering just to eat food. And when he told me that it's possible to be able to get all the protein you need, you get a lot of more vitamins, a lot more minerals, you, you want to be on a high fiber diet, consuming mostly a, a plant-based lifestyle. I was like, you know what? Let me try it out. I mean, how bad can it hurt by just eating vegetables, you know? It was in your classroom. Cause I saw that, that's the video that made me go vegan. Or the one in, it was 2011 when I went vegan. So many people have, that's so cool. So you mm -hmm. actually were in the classroom with it. Yeah. Me. That is awesome. Wow. Now, prior to that, was there anything that maybe primed you up for it? Was there anything that made it easier for you to kind of accept that message? Yeah, uh, I was in the military for eight years. So I did four years in the United States Marine Corps, fully active service. Also deployed to Operation Iraqi Freedom three and four. And then I did another four years in the United States Navy Reserves. Through all the war and the things that I experienced, I actually saw human beings at its worst, you know? Like war is not like Call of Duty, it's not, it's not like the movies, it's, it's real and no one wins, like no one likes it. And I think people who actually enjoy it, like, I don't know, like maybe something's wrong with them, you know? But no one wins in war. Like the bad guys don't win, good guys don't win, and even the people in between don't win as well. And what, what primed me up when it came down to transitioning more to a vegan lifestyle was mostly seeing innocent beings being tortured, right? And seeing these innocent beings at the brink of death and, the, and that the facial features that they had when they were about to die. I saw the same when it came to other people in war. You know what I'm saying? I saw the pain, I saw the suffering and there's no difference. Like the shock that you see in their eyes when their life is about to be taken, it's not a pretty sight to be seeing over and over and over again. So when it came down to everything, uh, that's what actually made me transition more to a vegan lifestyle was just seeing that similarity when, when beings are about to die. And I didn't want to play part of that. And I was still on the fence, you know, it wasn't just 100% emotional, but it was enough to try it, you know, it can't hurt to try. I mean, it can't kill me. And if, if I get sick or something, I could always revert back to eating meat. So the first thing I did was I went ahead and talked to Gary after the, after the speech. And I was like, just like any other person who's interested in a vegan lifestyle, I was like, where do you get the protein though? And he was like, oh, there's tons of stuff. Um, and he, he gave me some resources to check out and stuff like that. But at that time, you could say the internet wasn't, it's best, you know, and, you know, I hate saying this, but like, he did say like, hey, email me, <laughs> stuff like that, I emailed him, I didn't get 
any answer, which was, I was a little bummed out, but it didn't stop me, you know what I'm saying? I was just like, you know what? Like, the message was really good. Um, I'm just going to do more research, you know? Like, I really want to look into this. And, and then it kind of graduated from there. And did you, you, did you progressively do it, or did you, like, systematically remove foods, or did you just do it right on the spot? Well, with me, I, the idea in my mind when he planted that seed was to go vegan that week, right? I didn't go immediately. It was that week because I still had food in the fridge. And I was, how I looked at it, right? And how I made sense in my mind was, you know, the damage is done and I don't want to just throw it away because it'd be like, you know, in, in vain by doing that, you know? So like just throwing it away for, so that means they, they literally died for nothing. I just threw it in the trash. So I went ahead, ate the food for that week, but I told myself after that, I'm gonna go vegan. But what ended up happening after that week, you know, because you got that cool down period, you start thinking to yourself, you start compromising things. And I was like, you know what? I'll, I'll go vegan, but I'll, I'll do more of a pescatarian diet. So I still consume fish or seafood, but everything else was plant-based. And, and the only reason, again, I hate saying this, is because in his speech, when he talked about marine animals, and again, like me being vegan now, like he wouldn't have to go so hard and so deep. But in, at that period of time and how it felt and how I projected it, right, it was like he didn't really go deep and hard into marine animals. He went really hard on animal agriculture, like the farm animals, like pigs, chickens, you know, um, you know, those cows, you know, he went really hard and he kind of breezed over, like he talked about, but it was just like a slight breeze over them. So in my mind, obviously I was like, well, you know, I, I'm, let me try it first. And then what happened, once I went pescatarian for a few months and everything else was plant-based, I refused to do dairy, refused to do eggs, meat, chicken, anything that was on the land, I refused to eat. I lost a tremendous amount of weight. I was at my heaviest at the time at 225, maybe somewhere around 17 to 20% body fat. And in my mind, I thought that was healthy, like become like a bulking, right? I was like a gym bro, uh, because I wasn't really that knowledgeable in nutrition or fitness. I was, in fitness, I was just a beginner still. Uh, but nutrition, I, I was just bro science. And I was like, yeah, I'm bulking. But when I went pescatarian, I lost a tremendous amount of weight. I, I went from 225 all the way down to like 160, 165. But I was happy where I was at because I was just ripped. And I was never that ripped in my life. And I was just like, well, and I kind of looked in the mirror. And I was like, you know what? I think this, this stuff works. And if I got like this on a pescatarian diet and everything I'm eating already is 80% plant-based, I mean, I just need to drop the fish because the fish I was eating anyway was only sushi, uh, shrimp, because I would make ceviche and stuff like that, tilapia and salmon. So it was only like four items that I, I literally went around with that. So I was like, you know what? Let me just drop that and see how just going 100% plant-based is. And that's, I did that and then I never consumed animal byproducts ever, ever since. Yeah. yeah. Awesome. Prior to doing all this, did you ever, was there ever a time where you felt like there's no way I would go vegan? Um, truthfully, I just never thought about veganism. It, it, I mean, I knew about vegetarians. Um, when it came to vegans, there was, I just didn't know. Like there was, you know, I never thought about it. Never, you know, think about it. I mean, the only thing I could recall really is probably, I know my mom one time, she was trying to lose weight and she, she was buying like vegetarian burgers. And she was like, yeah, you should try this. And when I tried it, it was from Morningstar. And trust me, they, they have well, way better products now, yeah. right? But like in the past, and to be honest, it tastes like straight trash. It was just like cardboard, right? And I was like, I was like, there's no way 
I'm going to eat this, right? And I was like, I'd rather just eat my burger. And even when I looked at the nutrition facts, I was like, there's no protein in here. So um, I remember that time, but this is even before I even saw Gary Roski, you know? Um, and how my mom pitched it, she's like, it was just like, it's healthy for you. And at the time, my mom was like, at her heaviest. And, you know, it's just like, are, are you going to listen to a trainer who's overweight? Probably not. You know what I'm saying? So it, it's sadly to say, like, even with my own mom, I'm like, I'm not going to listen to her just because she's like, it's healthier. You know, I'm like, mm, mm, yeah, I'm in better shape. I go to the gym. I'm in the military. You know, I put like all these like little accolades over my, for myself over her. You know, I need someone who leads by example. But with Gary, I mean, He's in, he's healthy shape, you know, he's not like a bodybuilder or nothing, but he's healthy, but his, his pitch was hard and he's aggressive. He's, he, it's not for someone that's like have weak skin, especially this day and age. Like people won't be able to handle Gary. They'll be crying, cancel him, you know, crying all this crap, but he's transparent. He's, and, and I think people need to hear him more because he's transparent and he tells it how it is. And me being a military guy, I'm used to hearing that type of talk. People being hard, transparent, not soft, going around the bush, try, not trying to hurt people's feelings. No, I'll tell it how it is. Yeah. And, that's, and when I felt that, I was like, this guy must be telling the truth because he's straight up. Yeah. And this is the type of person I like. Yeah. No whole bars. Has that influenced the way you are an activist now, by any chance? Are you kind of like that? Um, I mean, when it, when it comes to the training and stuff like that, I do it in a way where, especially on social media, I do it in a way where it's kind of funny, but I do throw in facts. And it's, it's kind of different. Like, how he articulates is like, is straight to the point. It's not even a joke. Yeah. You know? With me, I kind of say it in a funny way. So if, you know, I made one Instagram post, for example, where, you know, I'm talking about eggs. And I was like, you know, eggs come out of the chicken butthole. You want to eat butthole foods? You want to get shit protein? You know, don't do that. I, I make it in a way where people can kind of like get it. It's entertaining, but it's not too offensive. And sometimes I do, I mean, when you're an influencer, you, you kind of you kind of have to play, I, I'm not one way. I, I press buttons differently, <laughs> you know? So it's like, but because I know how people consume content is going to be different. Sometimes it's going to trigger somebody. Sometimes I'll, I'll go super aggressive, no hold bars, very transparent. Sometimes I'll go funny. Sometimes I'll throw it in, mixing it in with nutrition or, or, or like scientific facts. You know, like I always change it up because I just know different people are going to consume it differently. You also have like a, I'm a carnivore shirt or something like that. Yeah. 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 Tell me, like, what's that about? Yeah. I have like an ex vegan shirt, a carnivore uh, diet shirt. And this is like my alter ego where, you know, again, it's, it's content that I know that people will consume, but it's like a trick, you know, because I'm making it for meat eaters because how many meat eaters out there is consuming the same content from other trainers, nutritionists, dietitians, uh, people who, who promote eating animal uh, diets like Liver King and, you know, he, this is one of my friends, King Keto, you know, like he's one of my friends, but like, I have, to, I have to call it out how it is, you know. It's like people like listening to that stuff all the time, right? They want to hear what they want to hear, you know. It's like, you know, if I said like, eat donuts and get ripped, you know, I already know that mad people are going to watch that content because I'm digging into their gluttony of something that they already know that's bad. So if I can find a way where they can get what they want without giving up what they want, then they'll listen to that content and consume it better. But then but, you twist it. But then I twist it because I show them the reality. It's, it's just like, how do you, you twist know, it? Do you actually like go out and do something in particular? I'll, I'll wear it and be like, I'm ex vegan, whatever. You know, eating meat is good for you, builds great muscle, look at it, it's organic, grass-fed, no hormones, no, no pesticides in the food. It's also on a vegetarian diet, so why do I have to be vegan, 
you know, with these vegan zealots out there, if the animals is eating the food you eat. So I'm actually vegan, you know, like, because, because that's like some of the things people try to, I see it in the comment section. It's like some people are just clowns. So I act like a clown and people like entertained, but then I flip it on them. And then when I tell them the reality, some people get triggered. So vegan community, I'll see they're like, woo, you know, I thought you really were serious about that, you know? And I'm like, nah, you know, I'm just messing around. But then the biggest thing is that the people who's not triggered, you know, obviously the vegans who's just like, you know, wiping the sweat off their foreheads because they thought like I'm off the I'm off the freaking ringer. The meat eaters that actually see it, they're like, you know what? I, maybe he's right. It's entertaining. You know, he got my attention. And then he's not really pushing the agenda. He, he's like showing different alternatives that I could try, you know, so how can it hurt? Yeah. yeah. And, then, and then they try it. Yeah. Just something simple as that. Yeah. And, um, and I get comments. I, I get even clients. Like my, my main target is actually new vegans mm -hmm. because I know when I was a new vegan, the things I struggled with, like going to the grocery store, you know, for hours, reading nutrition labels and finding out that all my favorite foods has milk or eggs in it, you know? So it's like Krispy Kreme donuts. So I was like, oh man, for real? Yeah, you know, like a lot of things that I used to love, like it had tons of animal byproducts. So I helped those new vegans to be able to just get a grocery list that's already set up for them so they can know what to eat right off the rip and then help them get to their goals so they can be a healthy vegan, yeah. You know? Because I don't want them to be an ex vegan Ex-vegans are ex-vegans because they never knew how to do it right. Exactly. Yeah, because if truly down in your heart, if you're vegan, you'll though, yeah, you'll find a way because you're doing it mostly for an ethical cause. You know what I'm saying? So it's like, how can you be vegan and then go ex-vegan and then go out one day and start shooting the deer in the head? Like, it, yeah. it's just like, to me, because I'm like, I'm in the military. It's like, if I just go rogue and just start killing people for no reason. Yeah, like I feel like because I was a, because I'm a Marine, you know, not was am a Marine. Right. It's like we have a particular code of conduct even when we leave the military. You know, it's like we, we make that promise where you have to protect anything that's foreign and d domestic. So in my mind, I would never go rogue for any particular reason. You know what I'm saying? So I look at that with anything that I put my heart in and I make a, like a, you know, a vow to. Yeah, you see, I think some of the problem is, is like people, they treat it like it's a diet when it's really a philosophy. Like 80% of people that diet fail at their diet. Yeah. You know? Or it's even higher sometimes, you know, yeah. that, that I've heard. So if they're treating it like it's a philosophy and they embrace that, they will find a way, you know? Yeah, yeah. Would you date somebody or be with somebody who isn't vegan? Who's not vegan? Yeah. No. But didn't you start to? <laughs> didn't you start to? Like, weren't I mean, you I have I'm in the past. Now, are you married? Technically. Okay, yeah. yeah. <laughs> now, she wasn't vegan when you met her, right? No, she wasn't. She was vegetarian, though. Okay. Yeah. Right. Now, how did you handle that? Mm, I pretty much just pushed, pushed her buttons, really. First, I started trying to show alternatives to that. Then I'll sneak in, like, little animal, you know, videos and stuff like that, what happens to, like, the chickens and the male chicks when you purchase eggs and stuff like that. Very persistent because like it, it bothered me, you know, like opening up the fridge and seeing like egg whites and stuff like that. And, and this is something that I, I really care about. And so for me, like, no. And, and, and the reason is too, because I've already tried it. You know what I mean? And I got to a point in relationships where I was like, I need to find someone who's like, who thinks like me, who lives like me because a lot of people don't think it's that important, but you have to realize that all human beings communion, right? Communion has been around since the day of time. So it plays a big part as much as you don't think. Like I could be with friends and eat with friends who, who consumes animal byproducts. Like that's not a problem. But if it's someone that I'm going to bed with, I'm living with every single day, like, nah. Yeah, it, and I tried it, and it's just I, I had a lot of bad experience. And I'm not saying this is something that everyone should take in, you know, like I'm just explaining my personal experience. 
because I've been in relationships where they went vegan for me, you know, and it shouldn't be for me, it should be for the animals. And then we get into a fight. And then I remember clear as day, she was like, take me to McDonald's. I took her there and she bit into a hamburger and like to like spite me. And I won't be very honest, in my mind, when she did that, I was like, well, what I told her was, I was like, if you're thinking about eating that hamburger, the only person you're hurting is yourself because what you're eating is trash anyways. Yeah, it's like, I mean, you might as well, you know, just, you know, went to the trash can and <laughs> out of there because like that stuff is straight trash. Yeah, so you're just hurting yourself. You're not being spiteful to me at all. But in my mind, I was like, it's probably messed up. I was like, I hope you choke on that shit. <laughs> yeah, <there's> actually- <laughs> <laughs> because I was pissed, obviously. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was like, I was like, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but 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 that's when I got to that point where I'm like, if I'm thinking like that and you know, people are doing stuff like that, why do I need them in my life? Yeah, you know, I need people in my life that's gonna support me and help me do what I'm trying to accomplish and support me in that, not trying to do things off of spite because it's, a, it's something that they really don't believe in. You know what I'm saying? It's ironic you should say uh, the choke thing because there's actually a, a syndrome called steakhouse syndrome. And it's, it's because the bolus um, from the, the eating meat is, is so like hard, it's, it's hard to swallow and it gets stuff, stuck in the esophagus so frequently that doctors call it steakhouse syndrome. That's how, yeah. that's how designed we are to yeah. eat animals. <laughs> What's your brand? Uh, Body HC Fitness. Cool, cool. What's the domain name? The domain is bodyhcfitness.com. What's the HD stand for? Uh, during that time period when I created the name, it was like high definition. So it's like, like the body in high def, yeah. you know, so it's just like, you look better, you know, yeah. but now we have 4k. So it's like, you know, it's like, <laughs> we got 8k, we yeah, got 8k, like? you know, so you know, we're in another thing. Like HD is like out of date, but I was like, Hey man, it's still catchy, you know, whatever. That's you know? Right, right, right. And what do you do? What's your business do? I mean, is uh, it just the coaching like you were talking about earlier or is there something else? Yeah, yeah, it's, it's online coaching. So I train people from all around the world. And like I said before, I help majority new vegans to transition into a healthy vegan so they can do it the right way and have sustainable results. Because in the fitness industry, some of the problems that I witness, especially working in it for over a decade, is that people will work with trainers, people will sign up to... Uh, clubs and and fit and gyms uh, get with trainers and they would give them workouts or have them train, but it's only so far you'll go if your diet isn't right. And I witnessed this all the time. And when I saw that, I was like, something has to change because why why all these people are spending all this money and they're not getting results? And people were asking me questions like. I'm doing what you're telling me, like, uh, you know, especially when I was consuming meat, like I'm doing the chicken, I'm doing the rice, I'm doing the broccoli, like, well, I'm not getting ripped and stuff like that. And that's when, you know, during that period of time, I looked into like becoming a nutritionist. And at the same time, I was vegan. So um, I just put two two together. And once I started learning that knowledge, I started applying it to my clients and my students. And, you know, decade later, I'm really good at what I do. And I know how to build like a, a really high nutrient dense, high fibrous plan that's going to get people ripped, help them build muscle, um, reduce a lot of health related illnesses and, and sicknesses that can occur or they already had. Uh, blood pressure is lowered, you know, all these all these things. I just do it like that. Awesome. Now, what's a day of eating look like for you? And do you, do you have like a routine that, that, that's kind of like, oh, I eat before I work out or I work out before I eat or anything like that? Do you do any intermittent fasting? Or- um, I, when it comes to my eating routine, when I work out, I usually do it fasted, but then I will bring snacks with me in the gym. So I mostly do my cardio first. After that, I'll have like a protein shake. And once I'm finished doing my resistance training, I'll go home 
And then I'll have like a tofu scramble. I usually have that on pretty much every day for years because I just love it because I was always a big- Is that why you have man boobs? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but, but like the thing is I love tofu scramble because like I can get majority of my protein in because it's very high in protein. And it's a way that I can get a lot of my vegetables in as well versus just eating like salads all the time, which I, I love salads, but if I want to get a lot of my nutrients in, it's better when I cook it. So in my tofu scramble, I slam in like garlic, onions. And, and when I say like garlic, onions, mushrooms, it's like big portions because people don't realize that when it comes to certain seasoning foods, you have to eat a lot if you want to get the nutrients from it. So then just chopping up a few onions, I'll do like a whole cup of onions, chopped onions, you know? Then just doing you know, two, three garlic cloves, I'll do like a handful of garlic. Like, because when, if you, I use something called my fitness pal and it shows you the nutritional facts of every, every food. So when you're plugging everything in and I follow what majority of what a lot of plant-based doctors do, especially uh, Brooke Goldner, she's, re she's really big in hypernourishment, right? I interviewed her in Houston, yeah. Yeah, she's really big into hypernourishment and I love her philosophy, right? Because she, actually, she could actually say, I reverse diseases, right? That's why I like her. And she reversed her own disease. She had lupus and she reversed it and wrote multiple books, been on multiple interviews, you know? And then she reversed other people's diseases, you know? Like Hashimoto's, lupus, all these, all these autoimmune disease. I'm like, and I think she's undervalued. Like people, like people don't realize there's someone here like that's literally saving people's lives, right? So with her philosophy, I'm like, I'm going to use that, plug that into my program, use my fitness pal, so I can actually see the hypernourishment and then apply that to what I eat and apply that to my students. You kind of covered some of your food. Is there anything else that you want to... Yeah, after the tofu scramble, is, um, I, I'll do like for lunch, like daring chicken with like a big giant salad. And then at night, I'll have like a, a vegan Greek yogurt with some like protein powder. Yeah, yeah and that's it. <laughs> and you're already done with your workout, right? Yeah, I, I do the workout first thing in the morning. Nice, nice. We were just at the Vegan Fitness and Health Expo. You want to talk a little bit about that? Yeah, so um, I was the head judge at the Vegan Health and Fitness Expo. A really great event that was held at the Broward County Convention Center in Fort Lauderdale, Florida. I liked the event just because it showcased a lot of vegan athletes. And this really represents people, it represents the vegan movement because a lot of people think that vegans can't build muscle, they're super malnourished, they're out of shape. And by seeing professional athletes on stage actually breaking that paradigm, um, that's why I really love the event. Because it's, it's one thing when you're just online all the time or watching YouTube and you're just watching like famous influencers, like one person here, one person there. But it's another thing when you see a bunch of other athletes who's doing it too, like just normal people, you know what I'm saying? And they're not some big influencer. Like you just see a bunch of normal people who's fit, shredded, jacked, yeah, and they're able to represent that. Yeah. Hey, do me a favor. List some. I'm uh, delineate them. Like, who are some of the, the ones that people might want to check out? Uh, what, influencers? Yeah, like you that are, that are uh, uh, like, breaking the paradigm, like you said. Uh, so, like, the big influencers is, would be, like, uh, first, like, John Lewis. He's a good one to follow. Uh, he's, he's very entertaining, but, again, he's very factual with, with stuff he pushes. Uh, you got Tory Washington. He's, like, an amazing athlete, and he's an IFBB pro as well. And they're all vegan? Yeah, all vegan, especially for a very long time. You have Nimai Del Delgado. He's a good guy. Uh, Jonathan Thomas. He's, he's a good guy as well. A big bodybuilder. He's really jacked. You're, you're talking about just athletes, right? Well, I mean, you could throw some others in there too. Uh, you know, Brooke, Dr. Brooke Goldner, Dr. Milton, Milton Mills, uh, Dr. Michael Greger. Those are those are some of the guys that I follow. Columbus. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Batiste. Batiste. Yeah. He he's a good guy. He's he's actually in my program. I'm actually training him. Yeah. He's a good guy to follow as well. 
but those are a few. Kind of excited to get some different off the beaten path, kind of like stereotypical everyday beacons that I that I know. Um, so I'm really excited to have you in the mix. And there's also like Jeff Palmer, right? Yeah. So I'm sure you could think of many other bodybuilder types, right? Um, Jehen Jehenna Malik, right? Yeah, yeah, yeah she's a good one. And she's like vegan from birth, right? Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Anything else that you want to throw out there that we didn't discuss? The last thing I could really say is, you know, if if you're looking at this video and you're feeling or thinking that this is something that you want to try out, I highly recommend, you know, finding a professional that can help you because it's, you don't want to make the same mistakes that ex vegans do. You don't want to make the same mistake that I've done because, you know, if I, if you heard my diet in the beginning, I got great results, but it won't work the same way with everyone. And especially during my time when I went vegan, there wasn't a lot of this processed foods, you know, I mean, the only way you could do it is through whole foods, right? But now you have all this process. So I always say, you know, find a professional that can definitely help you out, especially if you already have a health related disease. And that's your main idea of going vegan first, because a lot of people that I receive majority is because of health. And then secondary is, uh, you know, for the animals, you know, and then maybe when they're healthy, then that it switches, you know what I'm saying? Then they're like, oh, I'm healthy for me. I'm vegan for animals and for health. So I always say, find that professional so someone can give you a structured plan so you can follow, so you can learn how to be vegan the right way. Because you wanna make sure you're getting all the nutrients you need so you can be healthy without getting sick. And, and also you wanna make sure that you're eating foods that's gonna, you know, help you be ripped, you know, build muscle, have the body that you love, you know, so you have more confidence because I personally feel, and this is my personal opinion, you know, I know a lot of people might say, oh man, this, it shouldn't be like that. But I feel that when you're vegan, you should be fit. You know, that's my philosophy. That's why it's called body HD fitness because a lot of people feel that Vegans are weak, tired, sick, overweight, whatever, you know, like they're, they're feminine, they're gay. It's, I've heard it all, you know? So I always say if you represent yourself in the most optimal way, like when someone sees me, I don't get a lot of feedback. I don't get a lot of negative stuff. And the negative things that I do get, it's ridiculous. It's just it's so off the wall that it's, it doesn't even bother me because they have nothing else to say because they're like, man, he, he knows his shit. He's fit, you know. I mean, what else can you do? You know, I've been hearing a lot. Oxalates, phytates, lectins. You hear that? Yeah. If the anti-nutrients are toxic. Yeah, yeah. I mean, people come up with things that's yeah. like fear-mongering. When you have something that's good, yeah. you have to find something that, you have to find something to pick at. Yeah. When I was vegan, I tore my Achilles, right? What do you think, what do you think, what do you think happened when I tore my Achilles? You think people said, oh, I hope you are all right? Or you think people say you need to eat meat. Yeah. There's more people saying you need to eat meat. And there's tons of high level athletes who tore their Achilles yeah. that eats meat. Yeah. But it's just the, uh, you know, they, it, they know like people aren't stupid, but they just act stupid, right? So it's like they found something like got them. Mm -hmm. And I always say when you're in the spotlight, it's not about what you do, it's what, what you don't do. They always, they always try to find something that they catch you for, yeah? Like you could do a million things right, but people will hang you for that one thing. So once I tore that, oh. But then what did I do? I just ignored. And then three months later, I was already running again. Yeah, very fat and it was a full rupture. Wow. Yeah, so full, fully Doesn't fast. Doesn't that usually take like a year or something? According to my doctor, he was like saying the longest is usually the year, but he said the quickest is like around three or four months. Yeah, and he's like, but this really depends on the healing factor and stuff like that, you know? And I just, I just did what I needed to do to heal fast, you know? Somebody asked you at, at lunch today, did you build all that muscle on a vegan diet? When it comes to building muscle, I mean, I was always in the, in the gym. I, mean, I started training in the gym since I was 13 years old, you know what I'm saying? Like very consistently. So I did build a lot of muscle on, on an animal-based diet, but I continued to build more muscle on a plant-based diet because when I started bodybuilding, I wasn't eating meat. I started bodybuilding on a plant-based diet. 
and for someone who's been doing bodybuilding for I want to say nine years going to 10 years like I continue to build and, and I continue to win even higher placings so and how I the only thing I can use to you know like measure is the placings you know obviously there's small little factors that can play in the role of those placings like the people that shows up and um, yeah. I mean, my experience when it comes down to posing, but if I'm still winning first places and, you know, going to national shows and even winning that, like, I feel that, and I, I'm only getting older, you know, <laughs> like, I think I'm doing pretty good on a plant-based diet. Do, you know? do you, so you win against non-vegans? Yeah, yeah, because, because I'm a bodybuilder, I'm just vegan, so there, there's no shows that's like, it's just, I'm going against vegan athletes and stuff. It's just like, the only show I know is that vegan show, yeah. You know? But when it's bodybuilding, it's bodybuilding. You know, you're just going against other people who does the same thing you do. What are some of your most uh, proud accomplishments? Like in the sport of bodybuilding? Yeah. Um, I mean, the highest, highest achievement I ever made personally was getting third place in the national level show. And that was like two years ago, which I was pretty proud and like the best posing reward that happened that same year, 2021, right? I would say. So yeah, somewhere in that time frame. Uh, that, but that's the best I've ever done. What's next, man? Anything coming up next that you're stoked about and maybe want to share? Um, the only thing that I have coming up next right now is really continuing to build my, my brand, you know, Body HD Fitness, um, continuing to come out with more programs to help people out because I just want to make sure that everything that I'm doing, I'm trying my best to help people to the fullest because I just know that there's a lot of fitness gurus out there, there's a lot of coaches, but they don't give out a lot of good quality to really help people. And when people come into my program, you'll hear me say students a lot, not clients because I have something called a vegan academy. So every week I put in an hour of education so people can learn about plant-based nutrition, health and fitness, so they can actually have uh, sustainable results. Oh, that's through your site? Everything's on the site, yep. Awesome. And you're on Instagram too and Facebook? Instagram, TikTok, YouTube, yep, awesome. Facebook. Awesome. Well, I man, I know you're probably tired, man. You've had a long <laughs> weekend and, and you go to bed pretty early, don't you? Yeah. yeah. <laughs> and you're, it's probably past your bedtime. So yep. I'm going I'm to cut it here, even though I'd love to keep going. And I want to thank you so much for coming out and, and yeah. helping me find this spot. Let's plug this spot real quick for letting us use this because yeah, we were in a pinch. Yeah. Leaves and roots. Leaves and roots. Yeah. 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 And that's here in Fort Lauderdale. Owner is Mark Hershowitz. Yeah. Really cool guy. He's vegan. He used to be a bodybuilder as well and a, and a vegan coach. Yeah. Awesome. And it's a, a kava place. Kava bar, yeah. Uh, yeah. Again, I want to thank you for your time. I know you're probably ready to roll. And yeah. <laughs> incredible, man. All right. Thank Thanks you, Thanks so much.